Greetings, my name is Tom Avey, and I'm the Karis Fellowship Coordinator. I've been doing this for 22 years, coming to the end of my run. In the next 12 months, I'll be phasing out, but it's been glorious. When they hired me 22 years ago, they didn't give me a big, uh, lot of money or a big staff or a big program to run or anything like that. So what I focused on in the beginning and, st and through the whole 22 years has been relationships, but that's been the most important thing. Early on, I did three things. I got a hold of the data, I wanted a database of names and contact information. I wanted to know where people were ministering, what churches they were in, and what they were doing. And then I went out and visited them. And I spent a lot of time in people's homes and offices and coffee shops and churches, worshiping in places where I didn't understand anything that was going on because of another language. And it was, it was glorious. But it wasn't just about me meeting people. It was about my ability then to connect them to each other and create we are one relationships because I believe that that's the best thing we have to offer each other. I have to offer people in our fellowship is each other. Now, um, I have four children and two, right in the middle are two boys and they are about 20 months apart. Uh, they're very close today, but there was a day when they fought like crazy. Uh, it was pretty bad. One day, uh, Sandy and I were in the living room and, and they shared a bedroom and it suddenly got quiet. So I decided I better go see what's going on. So I went back there and looked in the room just to make sure they were both still alive. And they were sitting in the middle of the floor playing wonderfully. And one of them looked up at me and said, Dad, we are cooperating. He knew instinctively that his father would be pleased when his kids are cooperating. I think we know instinctively that our Heavenly Father is pleased when we get along and we cooperate. Conversely, right now, I think we all know that our Heavenly Father is not pleased with the things that's going on in our culture. There's just a relational sickness right now that's happening that I'm sure displeases the Heavenly Father. But God isn't just interested in us getting along. He actually wants these relationships to produce something. In Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about, it's kind of God's church growth method, and it is these leaders, these people that God gives to the church, that, and he describes them in five ways. I'm not going to get into that, but I'm going to talk about what happens when those leaders, when those people, and those gifts function. It says that people are drawn together into unity and into Christ, and faith results. They grow up into maturity. They become what God has made them to be. It's effective. It's powerful. We are one relationships, or really, we are one super relationships that have power. Later on in the chapter, it talks about the power that every joint supplies. The metaphor there is of the body. And the, the place that he's referring to is where parts connect, because that's where the power is. That's what I've given my life to, is to creating relationships in our fellowship that are powerful, that allow us to understand the Bible better, and allow us to do mission together. And that's the best thing we have to offer each other, is each other. I want to give you two kind of takeaways that I think uh, would be helpful. They've been helpful to me, especially in recent years. And I'm going to put them in the pattern of put off, put on. It's also used in Ephesians chapter 4 when he talks about put off the old man and put on the new. The first one is to put off defensiveness and put on love. I'm not talking in defensiveness by, about passivity or non-resistance or anything like that. I'm talking about the kind of thing that goes deep in our soul and in our heart, in our mind, that can destroy us. I used to think that when I got older, I would be less defensive and things wouldn't bother me as much, but I'm not finding that to be so. Uh, people say things and I take it wrong way too quick. And later on, I'm usually wrong about what they said and it's not near as bad as I thought. Or they do something and I take it personally. I think that they, they meant to hurt me by that. Or even a look and I can read into that that they're angry at me. Um, and those, the problem with those things is that it's very hard, it's really impossible to, to, be, to be defensive and to love at the same time. I want to talk a little bit to my generation. There's a lot of us that are getting near to retirement or whatever it is, the next phase of what God has for us. I want to tell you something. We have an amazing group of young leaders in our fellowship. They are absolutely incredible. I'm very impressed with them. We can let go to them. We don't have to defend our ministries. We can let go to them. Um, and the, you know, there's only two things that can happen. It's either going to go better or worse. But they're both good because there's new leaders that are taking over 
and uh, it can be pretty amazing. The next put-off put on is to put off arrogance and to put on confidence. I want to say something twice, and I want you to pay attention to it. Arrogance is the evil twin of confidence. Arrogance is the evil twin of confidence. What I mean by that is they look identical, but they're miles apart. Sometimes we look at somebody that we think they're confident, they're really arrogant, or vice versa. Sometimes we think we are confident and we're really arrogant. Now, here's the difference. Confidence listens. Arrogance doesn't. Confidence likes counsel. It seeks counsel. It gets more confidence from others speaking into their lives. Arrogance doesn't. Confidence can be reproved. Arrogance cannot. They are, they are miles apart. My um, two things, remember that. Put off defensiveness, put on love, put off arrogance, and put on confidence. I have eight grandchildren. The oldest is Toby. She's just graduated from high school. She's uh, been taking cosmetology. And um, so she has to get so many haircuts in and so many perms in and all this kind of stuff. So we've all been getting our haircuts there and all of our stuff done. And she's getting near the end, and she needs to get all of her quotas done. So I asked her, I said, Toby, um, what do you need to get done in order to graduate, in order to get your license? And she said, I need to do some pedicures. And I, so, so I said, okay, you can do a pedicure. And then she looked up at me, and she said, and can I paint your toes? I said, no, no, no. But then a couple of days later, I relented. I want to show you something that um, I'm just, I can't believe I did this. But she painted my toes. Actually, it's made for 4th of July, so, um, you know, I get a little excuse. Now, why did I do that? Um, It wasn't for a sermon illustration, because this all came down a long time ago, uh, at least the plans for it. It wasn't really just because I love her. I do. She's my oldest, and we're very, very close. Um, It's for something far deeper than that. It's because Toby has a long road in front of her. She may get married, and she might not. She may um, have children, and she might not. She may uh, have a long marriage or not. She may have healthy children or not. She may have a career or not. There's just so much in front of her. She has a marathon in front of her. In order for her to get to the end, she's going to need some of these we are one relationships that will sustain her through it. But it's really even more than that. There's going to come opportunities her way, and it's going to take confidence for her to be able to seize those and to, and to thrive in those things. Ministry is a marathon. It's not a sprint. I've been at this for 45 years. And when I look back over all these years, it's been, a, it's been an amazing marathon. I could never have predicted most of what happened to us. And I was shocked early on when I did this job that I, at the number of churches that one month would be celebrating great things happening and within weeks or a month had fallen apart. The enemy is very good at what he does. He knows how to destroy the church and he will if we let him. It's a long way to go. But also there's going to be a lot of opportunities come our way and we need to have the confidence to seize them. And we are one relationships or what will see us through that. It's the best thing we have to offer one another. And if I have a prayer for this movement, for this Karis Fellowship, we're not structure, we're not a structure. There's no hierarchy, trust me, I know it well. We are all about relationships and we will be only as strong as those relationships are strong, but we will thrive and excel as those relationships make us confident for the future. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for this fellowship of churches, uh, the grand and well, glorious leaders I've met of all ages and all races and all languages. Um, I pray that you'll draw us together and to value these relationships because they are the best thing we have. Amen.